So why don't you come on over here, Grizz, give me a hand here. Let's unveil this. It's that quote that you gave to Doris Burke after game six. It's a blue collar town and I'm a blue collar player, a hard worker. Nothing's been given easily to me and nothing's been given easily to this town. It's a fit. When I think of guys who were very, very good players, but just a smidge below the level of a Hall of Famer, I think of guys like Joe Johnson, LaMarcus Aldridge, Antoine Jameson, Sean Marion, and of course, Zach Randolph. Did you know that, besides Randolph, there are 20 other players in the history of the NBA with at least 18,000 points and 10,000 rebounds? Almost all of them are in the Hall of Fame, and the ones that aren't certainly will be once they're eligible. However, I'm not sure that's going to be the case with Randolph. He might be the first player in history with that amount of total rebounds and points and not make the Hall of Fame. He actually became eligible recently, in the same class as Dirk, D. Wade, Pau Gasol, and others. But nobody even mentioned him as a candidate. In this video, I want to take a look and break down Zebo's career, and how he ultimately had the greatest redemption story in NBA history. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and let's get started. While most folks recognize Zebo from his days in Memphis, it was before that, in Portland, where his talents first became known. But it took a while for him to develop. He joined the Blazers during a time when they were competing for the title, so he was toiling away on the bench for his first couple seasons. It also didn't help that he was quite the hothead early on. Among multiple off-court incidents, including arguments with his teammates, and even punching Reuben Patterson in practice, Randolph was a well-known troublemaker. He's a major reason the team got the nickname the Jailblazers. He was the first face that came to mind when you think of that team. Young Zebo was a tumultuous, erratic player. In his rookie, sophomore years, he would always show flashes of what he could ultimately become. This bully ball style of play separated him from many other bigs of his era. He was a bruiser, a tenacious, tough interior presence, who fit very well on this gritty Blazers team. However, it wouldn't be until his third season where he became a full-time starter. With the departure of Rashid Wallace to Detroit, the 22-year-old Randolph became the man on the team, the leading scorer, and almost immediately started averaging over 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. By the end of the season, he was awarded with the NBA's Most Improved Player Award, a well-deserved nomination for a young player who's rapidly rising up the ranks. At the age of 22, he was already arguably a top 5 power forward in the NBA, with such a bright future ahead of him. Or so we thought. Over his time in Portland, he's accumulated a laundry list of off-court issues that really hampered his focus on the game. You combine that with his heated temperament and frequent arguments with his coaching staff, Randolph was maturing much slower than what the Blazers had hoped. There were three major concerns of Randolph prior to his arrival to the pros. One, his lack of athleticism. Two, his maturity. And three, his weight. Just at a glance, Randolph wouldn't strike you as a world-class athlete. And coming into the draft, he was a whopping 270 pounds at 6'9". Despite being such a supremely talented, skilled scorer with incredible footwork at his age, Randolph had issues staying in shape. Honestly, all of these concerns were related to one another. A lack of commitment and focus led to his weight issues. Shortly after winning Most Improved Player, Randolph signed a six-year $84 million extension with the Blazers. A well-deserved contract. Unfortunately, with all that money under his belt, he lost his motivation. For the next few seasons, Randolph's weight problems ballooned, and he flat out got so lazy. The Blazers went from a borderline playoff team to the bottom of the barrel, and it was around this time where the term empty stats was first coined. According to one source, Randolph was the poster child who spawned the term empty stats. He was still putting up good numbers on paper, multiple 20 and 10 seasons, but everything about this guy screamed loser mentality. His poor defense, his lack of passing, <laughs> the dude was a black hole. Plus, his hot-headed attitude and unwillingness to stay in shape? In just a few short years, he went from being perceived as a rising young star to the biggest waste of talent in the entire league. Besides his rebounding and post-scoring, which even then became quite inconsistent due to his lack of endurance, he really did not provide anything else. He was a one-dimensional player. 
Randolph's regression made us think his phenomenal third year was just an anomaly, a contract season. He was playing for a big payday and he got it, and now he thinks he can sit back and relax. Eventually, Portland got sick of waiting for him to mature, and so they traded him away. With some brief stints in New York and LA, he was even suspended for punching a player. Randolph's reputation was in the dumpster, and few believed he could salvage what was left of his failing career. Then, everything changed when he got traded to Memphis in the summer of 2009. Now, to give you an idea of how bad the image of Randolph was, here's an article from 2009. Quote, when you type in Zach Randolph in Google with black hole and cancer, article titles like trading for Zach Randolph is basketball suicide <laughs> popped up. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected anything out of Randolph in Memphis. But when his father passed away in March of 2009, a few months before his trade to Memphis, something clicked. Randolph finally realized that he has this incredible opportunity but he's been squandering it. Life's too short to be wasting away the best years of your life. And he looked back at everything he could have been, and everything he missed out on. By the age of 28, Randolph had no All-Star selections, no All-NBA team selections, and had only two playoff appearances and never made it past the first round. And he knew the problem was him. He needed to change. In Memphis, this was a greatly different situation. Randolph was no longer the young guy on the team. He was, in fact, the oldest player in their starting lineup. Besides Randolph, the other Memphis starters were all between the ages of 22 and 25. They needed a veteran leader to step up and guide this team, a strong locker room presence to set a good example for this young franchise moving forward. Randolph has never been that guy before, but with his newfound appreciation for the game, he changed for the better, and became the leader that he himself needed when he was younger. As a result, he got into the best shape of his life. His commitment was stronger than it's ever been before, and most importantly, he played the best basketball of his career. Randolph made his first ever All-Star team, and a year later, he led Memphis to an improbable upset of the number one seeded San Antonio Spurs. It was this series in particular that attracted the attention of fans everywhere. It's always cool to see an upset happen, but nobody knew how good Randolph truly was until this series happened. And I feel like most people were rooting for them. The Grizzlies were the new kids on the block, and people wanted to see San Antonio lose. Despite being in the league for such a long time, this was his breakout moment. In that series, he dismantled the Spurs' defense. Randolph averaged over 21 a game, including a 31-point series-clinching performance. It was the first playoff series the Grizzlies had ever won in the history of their franchise, spanning back to 1996. And to win it as an 8 seed, oh, it was an iconic first playoff series victory. The grit and grind era was defined by the Grizzlies' toughness and blue-collared work ethic that represented the city very well. This playoff appearance was also the Grizzlies' first one since the Pau Gasol era, and it started a string of seven consecutive playoff appearances for this franchise. This included their first and to this day only appearance in the conference finals in 2013. Even nowadays, whenever I think of the Grizzlies, the first face that always comes to mind is Zach Randolph. He brought a mediocre franchise into relevance for the first time ever. He cemented the Grizzlies as being a tough, rugged team. Years later, that's what you think of when you think of their franchise. Even with completely different rosters, even if they're not even tough anymore, you still think they are. Just because of how strong the grit and grind identity is. In 2021, Randolph became the first player in Grizzlies history to have his jersey number retired. In the summer of 2023, he got inducted to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame for his contributions not just to basketball, but the entire state, with his fundraisers, his charities, and his involvement in the community. For a guy who was once known to be the biggest head case in all of basketball, on the verge of flaming out of the NBA, Randolph managed to turn his career around, for the better. We've always heard of stories of players starting off strong and then ruining their careers down the road. For Zebo, it was the opposite. His career started off horribly in his younger years, but he changed and became not just a much better player, but also a role model for his teammates and his fans. All the arguments and fights with his teammates and coaches, that was all a thing of the past. He became a completely different person, and a much more well-rounded player. 
The selfishness early in his career was gone. He supported his teammates and wanted to see them succeed just as much as he did. And you know what? I feel like the modern day Grizzlies definitely need a guy like Zach Randolph. They need that veteran voice, a leader to build that camaraderie, to have a chance at contending for the championship in the future. Anyway, that's all folks. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.